Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to buy and sell stocks on Fidelity's platform. If you're not already a Fidelity customer and you're just thinking about checking it out, I recently made a video on my channel about how to open a brokerage account or a Roth IRA with Fidelity. So check that out if you haven't already. Now, before you can buy and sell, obviously you need to fund your account. It's pretty simple to link a checking or savings account and then deposit money on Fidelity's platform. I'm already pretty experienced with Charles Schwab and Vanguard's trading platforms and Fidelity's not much different. I recently opened this account and deposited $2,500. I bought a couple dividend stocks uh, just to get something showing on my positions page. We are going to buy a stock today, and to do this, you can go to the Trade tab. After clicking on the Trade tab, you're gonna get this pop-up. And if you want to buy and sell in the pop-up, you definitely can. It is a simpler uh, a format. However, I think it's more beneficial if you go down to the bottom and you click on Switch to Expanded Trade Ticket. And this is kind of like Fidelity's all-in-one buy and sell trading tickets. So when we click on trade, you'll notice we can trade options, mutual funds, uh, I don't know what trade armor is, uh, international currency, baskets, whatever. 99% of the people watching this video, I'm assuming you're looking to buy and sell stocks or ETFs. Now for cash available to trade, this is how much cash is in my settlement account. Currently, I only have a cash account. I haven't enabled margin trading yet. So if you had a margin account with Fidelity, this number would probably be doubled, closer to 5,000. But right now it's showing cash available to trade, 2,368. Now you need to find a stock that you want to trade. And today we're just gonna do the example of Apple. If you don't know the symbol for Apple, you can just type in Apple and then whatever companies have Apple in their name, uh, it'll show all of those and obviously we want to click on AAPL. Now what comes up is the current trading price for Apple, $119.74.5. If you want to hit the refresh button, you can hit refresh to see if you see it just moved a little bit. And it gives you the bid and the ask price. Uh, I'm filming this during the day, so the New York Stock Exchange is open. Generally, when you buy and sell stocks, you're gonna to wanna to do it on a weekday between uh, 9.30 and uh, five o'clock Eastern. That's when the New York Stock Exchange is open. Now you get the bid price and the ask price. What's happening here is there are buyers and sellers trying to agree on what price they want to buy and sell a stock for. 119.78 is the last agreed upon price between buyers and sellers. I know people want to think, well, that's what the company is worth right now, but buyers and sellers are the ones who determine what a company is worth. So buyers, people looking to buy the stock, are bidding currently at 119.77, and sellers are asking for 119.78. Now I know this is a very small amount, Apple's the world's largest company, so there's a very high volume of trade. But when you start trading penny stocks or smaller cap stocks, the spread, the difference between what buyers and sellers are asking for, gets very large. And if you're trying to fill a big order, you need to be careful of that. If you want, you can click on more quote info and this will just give you additional useful information. You know, what is the intraday range? What is the 52 week high and low? Uh, when is the next uh, X dividend date? When Apple will pay its next dividend? Uh, when's the next earning date? Which is actually coming up at the end of this month. Now currently on Fidelity's platform, we are viewing the simplified tickets. What that means is it's showing shares in dollars. So let's say, for example, I wanted to buy not in shares of Apple, but in dollars of Apple, and I were to put in $10. This would give me a fraction, uh, a fraction of one share of Apple stock. So if you wanna buy fractional shares of individual stocks or ETFs on Fidelity's platform, that's all you do. Just uh, with the simplified ticket, select dollars and then put however many dollars you want. Fidelity will then figure out what fraction of a share you're gonna get. However, for this example, let's do an entire share and we would want to do one share. Now you have the choice uh, in the simplified ticket of market or limit. If you're doing a market order, then you're saying just fill this as quickly as possible. I don't really care on the price. So if you go to buy with a market order, it's probably gonna be filled at whatever the ask price is. We can go ahead and refresh this one more time. It changed, actually changed like 12 cents. So that's kind of a big difference. So 
if you're not comfortable uh, buying with a market order saying, just give it to me at the closest ask price, basically, then you can switch this to a limit. And a limit says, I'm not willing to pay more than this amount. So it guarantees you the price, but it does not guarantee you that the order will be filled. So all the other bidders are buying at 119.88. If I'm comfortable at that price, I can type in 11988. And basically I'm saying, I'm gonna stand with all the other bidders and one of those sellers is gonna have to come to me and fill at my price. I'm not going above 119.88. And then for day or GTC, day means uh, this order will only stand for the rest of the trading day today. GTC means good until canceled. And this can be uh, good for 180 days. So you're really trying for you know four months or so to get this filled at this price with a limit order. As good practice, we can go ahead and click on View Expanded Ticket, and this, this kind of gives us the other interface if you were to use the drop-down menu. So we're going to buy, for example, one quantity. Now, if you have dollars and you want to know how many shares that's going to get you, let's say you had $2,000, how many uh, full shares of Apple about can you expect to get? Well, it'd be 16. So it gives you a, a nice little calculator if you're trying to you know, purchase with a larger number. So once again, this gives you limit, market, stop loss, stop limit, and then all the trailing stops. I made a separate video going over all these. I highly recommend you check it out if you're interested, but I feel like most people buying and selling are either doing a market order or a limit order. And then once again, we have the limit price, 119.88, and good till canceled. Uh, conditions uh, do not reduce, don't worry about that. So we're actually gonna switch this to a market order because for the sake of this video, I want it to get filled immediately. So we're going to click on preview order. Now, when I go to fill this order, I actually get this caution message. The buy order you are about to place exceeds the settled cash in your balance. That $2,500 I deposited, I did that yesterday. So I haven't, uh, the money hasn't taken two days to settle in my Fidelity account yet. So Fidelity is telling me, hey, we trust you that this uh, transfer of funds is gonna go through from your checking account. Uh, however, we're gonna let you buy this Apple stock right now, but please don't sell it until the money that you promised us officially settles in your Fidelity account. Next thing to mention is that Fidelity is zero fee commission trades, so we are not paying anything to buy or sell stocks or ETFs on Fidelity's platform now. Okay, we placed the order, we got a order received uh, serial number. We can now uh, go to positions and see that it filled. And there you have it on my positions tab. It shows Apple, we've got quantity. Let's, let's move this over to the left. One quantity of Apple and I'm already down 0.08% uh, or 0.08 cents, 0.07%, lovely. There you have it guys, that's how you buy and sell stocks or ETFs on Fidelity's platform. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, check out my channel. I have numerous other videos talking about Fidelity as well as other brokerage accounts like Vanguard and Schwab. And if you have any comments or questions, leave me one down below. I'll try and help if I can. Till the next video, take care.